Hey, this is Anthony from Havoc Games. Some people have reached out to us and asked about the Free Havoc Dual Decks and what is different about the Free Havoc Dual Decks versus what's in the full set of Havoc, the combat card game. Uh, we gave some answers uh, and messages and so forth on the Kickstarter campaign, but sometimes it's better to see things, and so I'm going to go through a little bit of what's in there. Uh, first off, real quick, Free Havoc is our role-playing game. We've played a lot of different games for a long, long time, and we've experimented over the years. And so we settled on a system for epic fantasy, which uh, we hope you'll like. So what Free Havoc is, is it's a 64-page full-color rulebook. It has a map on the back, a map excerpt, actually, of our fantasy world, which we call Soprime. And it's got some stats for fantasy monsters. Yeah. Brigands, Amish angels, dwarves, elves, spiders, bulls, I mean, all kinds of stuff. And candy and the undead. Uh, has some counter chart. Now, we're working on a card-based game. We like cards. So, we actually have encounter cards that we've got. But, uh, can't fit them all. And that's only part of one deck. Can't fit them all in a 64-page rulebook. It's also issues of printing costs and everything else. So, uh, that's not quite right for printing and production yet, but um, right now what we've got is uh, this um, chart-based approach for a couple things that are actually handled through cards. For example, we have quest cards, major and minor quest cards. Some of those are handled through a mock card in Havoc, others are through a table. Encounters are done through cards, but you know, we have a table here. We have what's called a Doom Clock, which uh, the different campaigns, regular campaigns and mini campaigns, those are controlled by a Doom Clock, which are cards. Because uh, we like cards, so we have Doom Cards here like this. This Doom Card is printed in Free Havoc right there. So you can play through kind of the introductory, introductory stages of the Curse of Kakadin campaign. You know, the different errors in the campaign and so forth. Um, but so we have some Doom cards that are printed in there that allow you to play through the first stages of the Curse of Kakadin campaign. Uh, we have the map, key to locations. So there are locations that you can explore on the map that have location cards, like that. So these are actual cards, but um, let's see, yeah, I think the Crappy Kynar is in there. So this is a place you can go to that's on the, the map and you can explore it, it tells you what to do. Mortron's Meadow, where you can go and you can fight a Shadow Warrior. So I'll hold that out. Uh, other things that you see in here, a bit about the Pantheon of Sopron. We have a magic system, of course, because this is epic fantasy and we like magic. That is, of course, done through cards. Our magic is not technological. It's kind of spooky, morally ambiguous. Um, if you're expecting to press a button and blast somebody with a fireball, our magic system ain't it. We have spell cards. Um, different spells that can be used at different times. So a subset of these spells and these magicians are given to you as mock cards in the Free Havoc rulebook. 
so you can see what we're doing. So we have three magical types in here, enchanters. Dark Arts, which are bad guys. And Mystics. And uh, so you get a taste of the magic system. Got a character sheet. And we'll put out a fillable PDF on that. We actually have fillable PDFs in uh, color and black and white. Some people have asked me for them. I've sent them via email. Just got to figure out how to post on the blog. It's been, you know, one thing after another. Magic system, bit of magic. Uh, those are components. This is not what you're seeing, but just to preview another card, you know, we've got component cards. And these are things like, you know, magic book or something, you know. Or diamond, uh, other things, magical stuff. Components can be used to perform magic and whatever. So the character generation system starts with alignment. That's, I'd say, our big innovation. When you create a character, you start with alignment. You pick either good, neutral, or evil. And then you roll for your alignment. And that is a unique approach. I mean, we've done every type of role-playing game you can imagine. We've done the game with, uh, it started off with three alignments, right? And then law, you know, chaos, neutral. And then we had the nine alignment system where you pick that alignment. We've rolled for alignment. We've done all kinds of games, either superhero games or fantasy games or science fiction games where there isn't a alignment. So we've done it you know, all across the board. So what we kind of like for our approach is you pick a, lean, a leaning, good, neutral, or evil, and then you, you roll. And there's a bit of an adjustment, you know, so if you pick good, you're more likely to be good. If you pick evil, you're more likely to be evil. We have a description of what these are. Uh, alignment then, um, that choice then figures into things like your attribute scores and you know, your advantages and disadvantages and skills. And just at a very high level, uh, good characters tend to have, you know, better attribute scores. Neutral characters tend to do better on the skill department because they're people of this world. And evil characters, they do well in advantages. So they wind up being rich and famous and have all kinds of... Uh, Cool weapons and armor and stuff. There's some adjustments based off the class you pick. These are the habit classes, knight, barbarian, warrior, rogue, citizen. A couple different methods to choose your role and so forth. One of these points, one of these days, I'll put up a video of rolling up characters. So you can see what it's like. There is a little bit of math, but if you're interested in role-playing games, you're not scared of math. So that's some of the math stuff you got to do. And then uh, you wind up picking advantages, disadvantages. Uh, and then one other thing that I think is a very important point for our system, we dispense with counting coppers. Characters have a wealth level that's picked as an advantage or disadvantage. So you would pick, you know, social class. And all this is going to be card-based, right? So you will pick whether you uh, are prosperous for your class or you're poor or destitute. So everybody has a social class. It's either uh, poor, dirt poor, serf, on up to royalty. And uh, in our view, this is a more, uh, this way is more true to the epic fantasy form. I don't think anybody can point to a, a book Swords and Sorcery, High Fantasy, where there was some, you know, heavy uh, discussion about you know, raising your appropriate number of coppers to pay for your armor. I mean, I know that comes up sometimes, but, you know, we do it enough in real life. We don't really want to mess with it for fun. So that's Free Havoc, just quick overview. So you can play Free Havoc with the full set, right? Uh, what we did since we launched the first Kickstarter back in... 
October 2021, uh, October, November, and, you know, didn't do well, so we canceled it, and now we're relaunching. Obviously, we're still working on stuff, and we've been working on Free Havoc and the, the fantasy card uh, game. And these are available in the, there are three dual decks. These are available in the Adventure tier and the Warlord tier. Um, the, each dual deck is organized by... Um, uh, the type of opponent. So this has cards for the Hobgoblin Archer and the Shadow Warrior. So if you go to Mortron's Meadow and you have to fight a Shadow Warrior there, then, you know, this dual deck gives you the Shadow Warrior and it gives you all the cards that you need for their deck. What the dual decks also do, because we do not like pay to win, the dual decks give you all the cards you need to play a one-on-one -on -one matchup. And there's a little bit of variation, right? But, uh, so this gives you a subset of uh, wound cards, bash cards, it gives you the tactic cards you need for your tactics, it gives you the weapons, the armor, um, and it gives you uh, wound and bash. A subset of wound and bash. doesn't give you the full um, set, but it gives you a, a subset so that you, you know, can see kind of the range of effects. What I'm going to do is do a quick, uh, oh, this is my character sheet for my latest guy, in the Curse of Kakadin Redux campaign that we're doing right now. Virtuous. I tend to like playing on the good side of alignment. That's actually one thing that's kind of interesting about using the roll for alignment approach. So I prefer to play good, and if I'm always picking a good character, it's a bit of a yawn for my friends. So when you have a, a die roll, it's like, yeah, we all know that Tony's going to wind up going with somebody on the good side, but the die roll might change that. And so I, I have had to play evil characters, and it just gives a little bit more of a challenge. It makes the game uh, a little bit more interesting. So anyway, this is my guy. Uh, and this is my third guy in this particular campaign because the other two didn't fare very well. One against a troll and the other against, uh, it was either some, I think it was some brigands. Um, so anyway, the, uh, these are the attribute scores. Um, different character points which you can read about in Free Havoc and this is what I started with and he's kind of like a, you could say he's kind of like a cleric. He's a knight who has some religious skills. Anyway, so the Free Havoc dual decks. I'm just gonna open it up and this is the prototype but you get the point. This is what comes in the uh, Free Havoc dual decks. So this one is for the Hobgoblin Spearman and the Wolf. And this is, it's Free Havoc number one. So this is the Warrior. And that is Ardith. So 108 cards packed in one tuck box. These are in random order because that's how the printer does them. So weapon card which is what you would get in the full set. And that's the wolf's small bite. The melee card, this one is for um, distance. Um, I'll do that another time, but that's in the full set. Uh, ability card, this is in the full set, I think. Doom card, this is one of those cards I just showed in the, in the book. In Free Havoc here. Uh, front it. Yes. So this is that card right there. That does not come in the full set. That comes only in the Free Havoc sets. Um, but let's see. Highest, that's initiative, that's full set. Armor comes in the full set. Combat action cards. These are all full set sorts of things. Shield parries, pauses, okay, wound cards. So you get six wound cards, and they're all in the, I mean, there's a bit of a range, but you're not going to have wound 24, serious head wound in this. Um, we had to make some choices, and we couldn't put everything in, so there's a, a bit of a range. You don't have the full range of, of wound and bash cards that you get in. Havoc. Um, so bash cards, same thing. It's six 
and you get a, a range of them. These are the tactic cards. These are Friday's footwork. You play this once a combat round. Okay, here's another special card. This is one of the location cards. So, uh, my eyesight is not so great. This is, uh, okay, this is for card 102, so it's location 2H8. So, you can look here, and this is the location for here. You start off in Sopon, you travel here, you can pull this card, you know, it uh, tells you where it is, location card in Sopon. You pull it, and it tells you the different things that you can do there. You go to market, you can rest, you can get a quest. And if you want to get a quest, then what you do is you would either go for the minor quest or the major quest. There's a page in Free Havoc. So there's two major quests that are given. And um, then you would roll on the chart here. So because this is an introduction to what we're working on. So this is something that does not come in the full set of Havoc. It's a special Free Havoc card. Prowess, full set, full set. Hobgoblin Spearman comes in the full set. Short Sword. Initiative. More combat action cards. And the combat action cards are a mix of attacks, defenses, and pauses. Wound one. I think I've talked about this before. It's also certainly covered in the book, but you know, just if you get a wound and that, that comes out with a red die result that's shown on the wound card, or excuse me, the weapon card. So, short sword, you roll, you to hit roll, there's a white and a red die combined. On a roll of eight to 10, if you're using a short sword, you inflict a, a wound, if you do at least two body to your opponent. So, let's say you do that and you pull one of the cards, you pull uh, wound number one, which is a not a serious wound. I mean, it's, the, any wound is serious, but a, in the range of things, it's a one star or one heart wound. So it tells you what happens, but, you know, because this is a thrust or slash, uh, bruised is only for smashes and great blows, so you'd be out of luck. wouldn't have applied that, that wound. So bashes work the same way. With a bash, no matter what type of uh, attack is done, that, that counts. Tactic card. Okay, here's Sopron City of Kings. This card only comes in the Free Havoc Dual Decks. It is here. Let's see. It is that card right there. And so it's Sopron, City of Kings, location number one, the center of the known world. You can do six different activities. You can rest. Uh, you can get a quest. You can go to the temple. You go to the temple of Pelon or Hestia. You can tell by the icons of the different uh, gods. You can go to a market. Uh, you can uh, hire minions. And then you can get magic components. That's what you can do. So that is a location card. So what you get in the Free Habit Tool decks are, that are different are um, some of these cards that are already printed in um, Free Havoc. This is not printed anywhere. This is Ardith. So she is the player character that comes with this. So Ardith, you've got all the cards you need for Ardith to fight a Hobgoblin Spearman or a Wolf. Can't do them both at the same time. Uh, you, since you're getting all three at the same, uh, all three decks together, you, you probably could. I'm not sure exactly of how the how, how that uh, works out, but you know, just with this one dual deck, Ardith is fighting either the Hobgoblin Spearman or the Wolf. And this is a player character card. None of these cards are in Free Havoc, but this card, Ardith, was generated by using this character generation system. Right. So Ardith is pretty tough. Uh, so five, right? So it starts with alignment. Well, if you look at the scale that's in that icon, that's alignment. So she is alignment five, and alignment five is decent character works hard to do the right thing. Honest and trustworthy, almost to a fault. 
They're willing to take risks and make personal sacrifices, although their efforts sometimes fall short. There's a little bit more in there. But, so that's alignment. So prowess, this is the standard uh, prowess card or prowess symbol that you see on all the other cards. Uh, so the wolf, right, has a prowess too. They're not too tough. They're only dangerous in packs, after all. So Ardith has a prowess of 3.1. There's an experience point system in Free Havoc, so, you know, she can get in experience points. She starts off with 8 body, 4 fatigue. Her um, command level, which is important for, like, leading troops and so forth, and it also comes into play for certain abilities, like, uh, I think, uh, the ability to wait for an over plan ahead, uh, I think requires a command level that's above 3.5. Then there's influence, and then wealth. So she is kind of a commoner. Her stats are right here. Size, strength, constitution, dex, intelligence, wisdom, charisma, her carrying capacity. Tells you the stuff she has. Tells her her skills. And gives you her deck. So the player character card looks a lot like the uh, class cards. Uh, I thought I saw one. It looks a lot like the class cards, uh, except it has a different texture, which is actually taken from our map. Because we have an outstanding designer that is working with us. So that is something you get only in the Free Havoc deck. So. Free Havoc 1 is the Warrior Ardith. Free Havoc 2 is the Rogue Had. Uh, Free Havoc 3 is Grim Sibby. Ordinarily, it would have been the Knight would have been 1, Barbarian 2, Warrior 3, but it was really a function of the art that was in the pipeline. All of this work was done by Megvin, by the way. So he wound up doing Ardith first, so that was the first Free Havoc deck that we had, and Grim Sibby came on uh, a little bit later. Uh, let's see, you get your medium shield, more slash cards, shield parry cards. You get the point. Let me move all that aside. And uh, so this one, we have a three, this is Grim City. And he's a knight. I'll do this real quick and then we'll come up on over 20 minutes. So, so Grim can fight Hobgoblin Heavy Infantryman or the Bear. And oh, here is Grim's card. So, uh, here's Artith. Here's Grim. Grim has alignment seven. It's still good, but uh, it's kind of on the border. So it's honorable, flawed and susceptible to temptation, but the sort who makes retribution. So that's Grim. His prowess is good, 4.5. 12 body, 5 T, so he's pretty buff. Four command level. Notice that Ardith actually has a higher command level, and uh, it's because she is more charismatic and uh, smarter because smart charismatic people tend to do very well leading uh, people in combat and commanding them. Influence of five because he comes from a higher social class than Ardith does but same wealth so he's, he's a minor noble and he starts with War Axe, Brigandine, Corinthian Helm so forth and then his uh, deck Great Blows, Hard Cut, uh, Four Cuts because he's using War Axe Angled shield parry, four shield parry, 11 pauses. He fights mounted. Fighting mounted gives you some uh, nice advantages. Um, so the folk card, this is the bear. It comes in the full set. Uh, let's see if I can just find some of the special cards. Here's one. Nope, that's a melee player. 
I think of the three sets, of all three sets, there are a total of 13 special Free Havoc only cards. Three of them are the player character cards, and then the other cards are things like, uh, okay, so here's a um, Doom card. So this is the sack of Sir John. So the reason we're doing cards for these campaigns is because you can replay them. And that's what we're doing right now, we're replaying. And let's see, kind of action. Yeah, I guess this one does, oh, it comes with a, I think I probably lost another location card or two that's in here because of their similar color. So this would be a location card for Sir John. So it tells you, you know, shows you the art. That's another Megaton piece. And then, unlike Soap Iron, we can do six things. In Sir John, we can only do four. You can rest and go to a size four market, which is actually a pretty good market. Uh, you can get a quest, or um, you can hire minions. So those are the kinds of things that you have in the different Free Havoc decks. And I can show you a third one, since I have it here. But I opened it already. This one allows you to do uh, to fight, and it's had, and he can fight either the Hobgoblin Archer or the Shadow Warrior. So, recall Mortron's Meadow. You can go to Mortron's Meadow. Mortron's Meadow is uh, location eight. This is card uh, one zero eight, so it's keyed into the location. Location eight. And so on. You go to Mortron's Meadow. You see at dusk across a haunted meadow, you catch a sight of a strange shape blinding through the trees. You have another world encounter, and you get to fight a Shadow Warrior. And here's Shadow Warrior. So. Very completely freaky. So the types of. You have a, of course, frightened fear condition because the undead are scary. Uh, mild poisoning, because I think that could come up. A location card here is the city of Durbant, which is a large uh, city in Jerome. Yeah. And you also get like the misfortune card that this comes in free havoc, or excuse me, in havoc kind of card game. You get the misfortune card. You also get the fear card, and you get the, and you get the poison card. Um, but if you just get the free havoc dual decks, which are in the adventurer tier, you get those, right? And then you also get these other, you know, the location cards and the doom cards and such, so you can play out the adventure. And I thought I just saw I had. There's more Transmetto after you've beaten the Shadow Warrior. Yeah, so actually, this is a. Oh, there's Hat. So things can change. So what happens is you might go to the location and more Transmetto, and this is 108, and that tells you kind of what's there. You have certain things that you need to do. If you fight the de de Shadow Warrior and defeat it, then you have to figure out what's going on. So you have to make a wisdom hard task check, which is a 15 plus. Of course, if you've got really good wisdom, that would be less than 15. And if you're blessed, you know, that would give you plus one. If you succeed, then you figure out the mystery of what's going on in More Transmetto and you replace More Transmetto with this card, which is 208. And so every time anybody goes back to More Transmetto in the future, after the Shadow Warrior has been laid to rest, which means the Shadow Warrior is defeated in combat, and then you have to figure out what happened there by making that wisdom hard task chat. Then you replace it with this more Transmeadow and it's a nice place to go to where you can rest or you can get food. But until then, uh, you can't. And I said had, here's the had card. So he's a rogue, nine alignment, 3.1 prowess, eight, four, body fatigue, 3.6 command level, influence of three, one, um, head has a missile weapon because that's what rogues 
flick. And this is a little bit of a treasure. And because he's on the neutral spectrum, he leans neutral, right? He's got lots of skills. And there's his deck. Anyway, so that's the Free Havoc system and the different dual decks. Thanks for watching. This went on a little bit longer than I thought, uh, but thanks for watching and let us know if you have any questions. Bye.